Hi everyone, this is Zheng Xun Li from SUNY Buffalo and I'm very glad you opened this video and I hope this online presentation will give a better experience. Okay, let's start. Uh, the topic of this presentation is about WaveSpy, that is remote and through screen attack by minimal wave sensing. And the agenda of today's presentation will first, uh, we will talk about the background and the motivation of this topic, and then I hope to show the rationale behind this new side channel attack, and uh, then uh, it's good to illustrate our system design and implementation with the performance evaluation. And lastly, I hope to uh, discuss the future work and the limitation of this topic. Here, uh, in the background, we know this is a very classic and uh, still very hot topic, uh, that is about side channel attack towards the screen. So we call it screen attack for short. And especially in the LT era, uh, we try to deal everything through the screen of the electronic device, like the smartphone, smartwatch, and the laptop. This behavior will leave a huge security risk that can be utilized by attacker to steal our sensitivity information. And in the past 10 years, some researchers have proposed interesting mitigations, like they will focus on the compromising reflection of the user eye, uh, finger movements on the screen, and also the electromagnetic leakage of the device. And especially last year, we know there's a paper about the acoustic emanation about the screen. And here we observed that uh, this previous works mitigations actually are all based on isolation, uh, which means no device proximation, no pre-installed wormwell, and even non-light of sight. So here is the question, um, is the isolation truly secure against the side channel attack? Uh, we believe it is not. And we argue that there is still a risk, even the screen, under the isolation. So back to this topic, uh, if such side channel attack is identified, then uh, we will say it will bring the limits of this topic and bring new research vision to the security community. And this is what we envisioned. Let's say we have a user named Bomber is typing his password to his computer in a room, and this room is isolated by a wall. At the same time, the attack Alice is trying to steal the password of the bomb uh, remotely and through a wall. However, uh, to achieve this goal, the first question is how could we enable such new side channel? Uh, in our subphysical system security domain, uh, we would like to first explore the mechanism of the target. And for here, for the screen, uh, we find a very common mechanism among all the popular screens on the market that is about the liquid crystal state. The screen content showing on the display actually are generated or controlled by the liquid crystal. Let's say we can see there is a deterministic relationship between the liquid crystal state and the screen content. So if we, the attacker can monitor in the screen a liquid crystal state, then it will enable attacker to monitor this screen content. So uh, this is our hypothesis. Um, by using this LC-based uh, side channel, uh, we can conduct a new and stealthy side channel attack to remotely attack screen. So however, to achieve this goal uh, is not easy. Uh, there are mainly three technology challenges. First one is about information accuracy. Uh, we know that the dodge pitch among the liquid crystal is usually around 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. And in the mobile sensing technology, we cannot achieve such high level uh, resolution. So 
how could we require the information of the liquid crystal is the first challenge. And then uh, the next challenge will be we know they are all fresh rate among the screen. So the internal time between each fresh will be 4 to 10 millimeters. So how could we conduct an attack at so fast speed? That's the second challenge. The last challenge is about stealthiness. Uh, so to conduct such techno attack, we have to involve some mobile sensing technology. So how can we ensure that our attack is secretly and non-testably? To solve the first challenge, uh, we introduce a concept called liquid crystal nullifying effect. That is, when a continuous wave uh, with the transmission signal uh, that is projected towards the target, like the screen, uh, or see the liquid crystal, uh, it will produce or modulate with subcarrier frequency. And this subcarrier frequency is highly related with the property of the liquid crystal state. When this modulate signal read it back from the screen, our received antenna will capture this liquid crystal state response. And then uh, we can see that the liquid crystal response of, from the digital screen contains the rich information about the liquid crystal state and holds the potential to enable attacker to remotely capture the screen uh, activities or the sensitivity information. Then the next question will how to estimate the sensing frequency, also the key towards the second challenge. So here we observe that the typical lens icon uh, among the screen is usually 3 milliseconds. So after calculation, we found the 24 gigahertz is the best solution for us in this application. And also 24 gigahertz has other advantages like very good to handle the nonlinear response and also not restricted by the ISM. Uh, for the last challenge, uh, we utilize the uh, minimum wave probe, which is very portable, uh, lightweighted, actually low cost, and the small size. Uh, we, we did this probe uh, in our census 2018, and this probe is very easily can be disguised by clothes or hidden in a handbag. So we totally solved this many string technology challenges. And then to further prove our hypothesis, uh, we did a preliminary test. Uh, first, we tested with three most common electronic device. First is about data display, which is LED type and 24 inch size. And we test with five very common activities on the screen, like online bank, Microsoft Word, and the PDF reader. And the results are shown in this image. Uh, the x-axis is the frequency of the received response, and the y-axis is the amplitude of the signal. And we observe that the spectrum of the received response are quite different. And this difference also has a huge room for us to recognize the corresponding screen activities. And also we test on the Samsung smartphone, uh, which is LCD top and uh, only 5.8 inch with very common five activities. And the, um, the response are quite different. And a similar conclusion can be get on the iPhone watch which is OLED tab, it's only 1.6 inch. And besides this three test, uh, we also did something under the real world setting. Uh, we test with Microbook Pro uh, with the 15 centimeters wall between mineral probe and this electronic device. And we test with four very common activities. And we find the response are quite different. Besides this, we also want to know if it, this new side channel can work in our attack scenario previously mentioned. 
So here we test with on-screen keyboard. So one thing is here, each button plays the same role. So for the simple illustration, we just select the password as 1235. And the result are showing in the, uh, the spectral image. And we observe that the response of each button type is quite different. So by now, we have proved our hypothesis. And but new problem appeared that we notice that the difference of each button or the screen activities are not so significant. So to further uh, such attack in the real world setting or precisely identify the screen activities, uh, we design our system with SPY. And this system mainly contains four modules, uh, response analysis, uh, screen activity recognition and sensitivity information retrieval, I think, are the more important modules. So I will emphasize on the last three modules here. And in the response analysis, we utilize a multi-level wavelet transform, and we find that the part three segment among the whole spectrum contains the real useful information about the liquid crystal, which is a 40-dimension feature vector. After we got this vector, we fit into the screen content type recognition modules, which is utilized as SVM with the Gaussian read based function. And the data, the data set will be n times m uh, with n feature vectors and m devices. And the output will have three candidates with the top three possibilities. And here we also uh, once we type the screen activities login, we would like to use the spectral function to augment the useful information and then to use our sequential to credential model to reconstruct the sensitivity information. And here this model is based on DanceNet. And to better illustrate the performance, I prepare a demo. This demo is to show WaySpy, a new tool that sees computer and smartphone screens through walls. WaySpy comprises a MM wave probe and machine learning model. WaySpy can eavesdrop any screen and reconstruct the screen contents from meters to hundreds of meters away. Let's watch our demos. As the user switches from engine search to personal file to banking website on his computer, WaySpy can accurately recognize the screen content. WaySpy can silently detect on-screen keystroke on a tablet or smartphone as the user clicks on each button. WaySpy can continuously locate a cursor screen position. As the user works on his personal device routine, WaySpy updates the real-time cursor position accordingly. Thanks. Uh, so here, this is more detailed information in this evaluation part uh, to test if our system can work on the real-world setting. Uh, here, we totally encounter six different groups uh, with different uh, uh, conditions of the uh, screens and also we test with 100 different screen activities by our 10 volunteers and there are three aspects about the evaluation firstly about overall accuracy uh, we, we find that our screen activity recognition accuracy is more than 98 percent and also uh, in the display resolution evaluation test we test with uh, uh, multi of the screen resolution and also the performance is very good, 99% uh, accuracy. And also with different material, uh, our system is still very robust and uh, the accuracy is around 99%.
after we got a little sense about our attack performance, uh, we also try to do something to protect our users against this new side channel attack. And here we propose two kinds of countermeasures. First, we call it cost efficiency approach, which is mainly focused on hardware protection and user behavior protection. And second, we call it zero cost approach, is mainly from the software protection. And in the last part, uh, discussion, I would like to emphasize two points. First is, although our attack system cannot achieve 100 accuracy, but this system will dramatically decrease the attack time complexity and the password entropy. And the second point is about feature work. Uh, in the next project, we hope to do a full pixel-to-pixel -pixel remote image construction. And the takeaway message of the project is uh, we propose a new side channel attack towards the screen that can enable attack to do something remote and through war. And the second is we suggest the sensitivity system should pay considerable attention for this attack. Uh, I'm very happy to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you for your time.